segment three, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Web, ntnm.org, all shows on YouTube, ntnm.org will give you the links. Community policing, caps24.org in the 24th district. We're very big on community policing. And I'd like to thank um, Todd Swish in particular for, you know, sometimes I get unusual guests. I'm not even sure how, how it happens, but Todd's a real live wire, and I want to thank him for this. It is a pleasure to introduce you to and the reigning Miss Illinois 2014, Marisa Bukite. Did I say that right? You sure Marisa? did. It's great to be here. First of all, thank you so much. And you look so regal, Your, your Highness. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm wearing the full uniform. <laughs> no, I appreciate that very much. No, it's definitely going to make a hit with people. There's no question oh, about it. So um, tell us a little bit about your background. Okay. Well, I was born and raised here in Chicago. I'm 24 years old. So I grew up in the Edison Park neighborhood of Chicago. and Not far from here. Not far from here. And I went to high school at Northside College Prep. So I'm Chicago Public School, um, born and raised. And then I went to college in Cleveland, Ohio, at the Cleveland Institute of Music. So I am pursuing cool. opera. That's my passion and what I would love to do as a career. And I came back to Chicago after college, and I've been pursuing my musical interests ever since. No, I want to wish you luck. And by the way, for those of you that missed the beginning of the show, Go to YouTube and check it out because she did the very first operatic Marty Levinson. <laughs> I sure did. So, uh, no, music, very interesting. I'm in Cleveland a lot, by the way. My uh, brother is over there with his kids, and uh, that's my home away from home. I love going to visit my nieces and nephews. It can be a fun town. I think there are similarities to Chicago, and I enjoyed being there. Yeah, it's definitely on the move. I mean, I've been going there for about 30 years, and what it used to be and what it is now especially around the downtown stadium section you're actually seeing growth there now yes um not to mention you know the rock and roll hall of fame is old news but there are you know you're talking about the republican convention being there um there's new businesses moving in there of course the world famous cleveland clinic yes i thought for a minute you were going to say the cleveland clinic of opera or something no <laughs> <laughs> no 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 cleveland institute of music and you know some people do refer to Cleveland as the mistake on the lake. And I think it's, you know, unfortunate that they haven't really developed on the lake like Chicago has. And I feel like once they start moving in that direction, it'll be a much more prosperous city. Oh, no question. I mean, there is that little area where you've got the uh, aviation museum and you've got a naval That's one right. and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's right. So it's all, there's so much potential. Yeah. So I'd like to see them capitalize on that. Yeah, I'm going to be there next month, as a matter of fact. So, That's uh, right. Yeah, Jewish holidays, go visit the family. Yeah, that, that's fun. the way you do it. Absolutely. So, um, what made you get into beauty pageants? Is, is, was this something, well, how did that happen? You know, it really started toward the end of high school, and this was when I was really getting more into my music. I had gotten into musical theater, and I knew that I really enjoyed just being up in front of people, sharing in an experience of beautiful music, and I wanted to get more practice. You know, I didn't have enough opportunities at that time, so I figured, you know, with the Miss America pageants, first of all, there's scholarship opportunity, and also just getting up in front of people more and facing my fears. I used to be super, super shy, so it helped me to get outside of that and um, just grow a lot as a person. So as I got more into it, I met many inspirational women, and I ended up earning um, quite a bit of scholarship money in the process, and I just got hooked. You know, the pageant bug hit, bit me. That's great. You know, it's interesting because... Um, I've seen Miss America, I've seen Miss USA, and I find that there's really a difference. That Miss America really looks for quality. If you're not a quality person, you know, on top of everything else and you have real talent and, and an ability to go forward, um, you're not going to make it in there. On Miss USA, it seems, you know, a little more flashy, let's put it that way. Well, let me say <laughs> that I'm glad that you recognize the difference because I think that there are a lot of stereotypes that surround pageants. However, like you said, Miss America Organization is a nonprofit. It's an organization of volunteers and actually the largest provider of scholarships to women in the world. Wow. And many people don't realize that. And on top of that, it's just great for growth opportunities and mentoring. So I have really found, you know, my niche there. Um, the USA and Universe organization is owned by Donald Trump, and it's just a little more commercial. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, yes, that is With one him, of the it's got to be all the way commercial. It's all the way commercial, <laughs> and it's more, I would say, image-focused and image-conscious. I mean, to win Miss America, you have to be beautiful, of course, but it's more about, you know, what's in here and what's in here. Well, you know, as I remember in the past, I, I look at some of the past Miss Americas, my mother's hero was Bess Meyerson, which was before my time. Okay. So, um, well, partially because she was Jewish, so that was like a big deal. Sure, of course. But more so, it's like she became a national spokesman for, you know, it, it, 
she, for like a refrigerator brands. She also he had an intelligent viewpoint and wound up actually having an important post in government at one time. Right, and that definitely happens. Yeah, and you know somebody like Phyllis George, who, yeah. uh, you know, another she, um, you know, she was was a big time sportscaster. She definitely contributed to society. Her husband was a governor, and she was very instrumental in the government. Yes. So you have a lot of instances like that. Yes, you see the former Miss Americas going on into you know political careers, law, medicine. Um, even entertainment. So they really go on to do great things. Yeah, no, there's a difference. There's actually a Miss USA that's in Evanston. And really? actually, she, yes. Oh, okay. And um, I mean, this is many years ago. And as a matter of fact, you wouldn't know what to look at her. And even when she won, you wouldn't think that she had those kind of looks, but she does have an aura about her that projects. There's that it factor or the charisma. Yeah. But she actually works for the police department over there in the public information section. Really? And actually, I had to work with her a couple times, and um, she really knows what she's doing. That's a unique story. <laughs> it really that. is. Yeah. So, no, as a matter of fact, when those guys told me, did you know that she used to be Miss USA? And I went, <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Yeah, exactly. So, what kind of, I mean, do you train for these things? I mean, I mean, you, you've seen, uh, do you watch all the PS pageants? Do you really study to see what, what's going to be asked of you and what you need to do and all that? You know, yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely watching interviews from some of the former Miss America winners, especially the recent ones. Um, but also just studying, studying, studying current events. That's huge, especially with so much going on in the world right now. Uh, these judges come from all walks of life. Um, there's a female military sergeant. There's people, um, Sean Johnson, a formal, former Olympic gold medalist, and she's 22. Wow. You know, so there's a wide range of judges on the panel, and they want to know everything from, you know, political topics to big social issues to our personal platforms. And really, they just want to get to know us, but we need to know a lot about a lot of different things. Yeah, no, because those questions, those questions could be meaningful questions. It's not yes. just a matter of, I mean, you just can't get up there and say, well, I, I pray for world peace. Exactly. I mean, you can, <laughs> but you're not going to win the thing. <laughs> no, that's You'll be sure. laughed at. Yeah. Right. So you have to know, you have to know something about just about every major topic. And then I think you have to know yourself really well, too. Well, yeah, yeah I, it's interesting. Do you have a coach or a trainer or? You know, I don't have one particular coach I work with. I have a fitness trainer. I have uh, a vocal coach and a vocal teacher. I have image consultant people and makeup coaches. So, you know, I'm kind of across the board, but I think ultimately it has to come from the girl herself. You know, we can have yeah. advisors in many different areas, but I don't have one set coach for the competition. Yeah, no, when you're in front of that kind of piano, especially people that are judging you, <laughs> if you don't from come head off to toe. real. Yeah. Oh, definitely from head to toe. Yeah. Yes, yes. There's no question about it. So, exactly. no. From, from that standpoint, yeah. The um, so what is the Miss America pageant? It's in less than a month now. It's September 14th, okay. and I leave in less than two weeks now because we're there for preliminary competitions, and um, it's in Atlantic City, New Jersey. So we're all there to do some events on the boardwalk and in the community, and then we start to compete. Well, this year I definitely have a rooting interest. So oh, uh, well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm definitely going to be Team Illinois. Out. Say again? Team Illinois. Yay! Yeah, that's what we're promoting. Yeah, listen, it's time we were number one in something. <laughs> Seriously, if the sports teams can't do it, well, occasionally they do, but yes, I'm yeah. with you. No, that would be terrific. Um, you have a Facebook page where people can check you out? I do. I do. It's Miss Illinois 2014 Marisa Buckheit. It's facebook.com slash Miss IL 2014. Same on Twitter and Instagram. And actually, you can vote this year for uh, your Miss America People's Choice. Really? Yes. If you go to missamerica.org slash vote, and then scroll all the way down to Illinois, don't click anywhere <laughs> else, uh, you can actually vote for me. Very to, cool. To be in the top 15. Very cool. So that does that actually count as part of the uh, pageant vote? For they pick one person that has the most votes um, out of that, you know, that contestant pool ahead of time. So basically the public is able to de determine one of the finalists. Well, you know, Illinois has always been very good at voting. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm hoping some of my key power players in Illinois can play so, a role. as they say in politics, vote early and vote often for Miss Illinois. Exactly. Marisa Buchheit, and thank you so much for gracing us today. Yes. I really appreciate. Thank you. And I want to thank my entire technical crew, Sunny Hirsch, and thank you for joining us, everybody. Bye-bye.